Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Embrace Hope International. We're located at 5613 Rockfish Road, Hope Mills. I would stay down by the lake because I don't want you to end up in Raker trying to find us. 5613 Rockfish Road in the great city of Hope Mills, town of Hope Mills. I want you to come down and join us because there's some things happening in this place that even I can't obtain. And it's happening in such a rapid state that the Lord is blessing us and he's moving on us mentally and he's moving on us physically. And because of it, saints, I want you to come down and join us and be part of this as we begin to see a movement of God. What a powerful God we serve. What an awesome God we serve who's going to heal you and bless you and give you an abundance of what you've been asking him for. Come on down and visit us. If you can't, you are on your internet. Uh, we just want to pray with you this morning, touch and agree with you that God is going to continue to bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. And so I know that we serve a God, and I know that we love God, but the first thing we should do is give God prayer. And so if you would, follow me in prayer this morning as I begin to usher in the Holy Spirit and begin to flow like I know God has purposed his atmosphere to flow this morning. Thank so if you would go with me in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for who you are, for what you said you're going to do. God, I thank you for the purpose of you, and I thank you, God, for sending Jesus into this atmosphere and giving us the authority, giving us the anointing, and giving us the will, but most of all, leaving us with the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us through every situation, through every situation, through every situation, and so we give him praise and honor and glory. So as I begin to move in this atmosphere, God, as I begin to preach, as I begin to sing, as we begin to walk straight in this atmosphere, yes. Father, anything in here that's not of you, we find it up and cast it out of here, according to Matthews 18 and 18. We find it up right now. We cast it out of here. Yes. Nothing shall stop your word. Nothing shall hinder your word. In the mighty name of Jesus. And so, Lord God, according to Psalms first chapter, I declare and I decree that we are your children. Yes. And because we are your children, we shall receive the car glory today. Yes. In the mighty name of you, Jehovah Gabora, I command you now to move quickly into this yes. atmosphere. And anything that's not of God, anything that's coming against us, fight against it right now. Archangel Gabriel, I command you now to stand at the door and begin to orchestrate this atmosphere. Anything that's coming in this atmosphere, come against it. In the mighty name of Jesus, I, I, Archangel Michael, come in now and discern the spirit. Begin to explain to each and every one of us what the word is saying to us this morning. Touch our hearts in a way like never before. El El Yon, I command you now to come into this atmosphere. This is your house. Live with it. Honor it and protect it like never before. El El Yon, I'm calling on you this morning because you are God. You are the almighty God in the mighty name of Jesus. And so because of that, God, we are saturated and we're surrounded by your glory. We're saturated and surrounded by your power. We're saturated and surrounded by who you are, who you say you are. And I know you will stand on your word this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. And so, God, I open up this atmosphere and I bring it to you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we come against witchcraft. We come against generational cycles. We come against generational curse. We come against demonic attack. We come against it this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. For your word said, whatsoever I bind on earth is bound in heaven, and whatsoever I loose on earth is loose in heaven. So I bind up anything that's out of you in this atmosphere this morning, God. And everyone that's trying to get here, move that obstacle out of the way, go before them, make the crooked path straight so they can get here and hear this word. We give you the praise, we give you the glory, and we give you the honor this morning because you're God. Yes, Lord. Because you're God. Yes, Lord. And because we serve you in the mighty name of Jesus. So have your way in this place today. Yes, Lord. Yes, have your way in this place today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Saints, I want to tell you that God is coming through. He will show up today like never before. I keep saying, I think I said it now for the fifth Sunday. This is a this is an atmosphere of deliverance. This is an atmosphere of deliverance, but not only deliverance this morning, but this is an atmosphere of wisdom. Of wisdom. wisdom, atmosphere of wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. And all you'll get is get an understanding. So today you will get wisdom. Today you will get an understanding, but today you shall receive deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. So we give him songs, praise, and hymns this morning because of who he is and because of what he's done. Thanks, God is moving in his atmosphere, and he's moving on and brings hope. 
And he's told me to tell them pretty soon, prepare yourselves because a major blessing is headed in this direction. Prepare yourself before a major blessing is headed in this direction. So all of you that's partaking in a prince home, God is ready to bless you. Blessing just simply means I'm going to power you. So there's a major empowerment coming to the people of Embrace Hope. So Thank I give you. God the praise Thank this morning for what he said to tell you because I know you're going to receive it. And then you're going to say, Lord, I received that because I need a change. I need a blessing. I need uplifting. I need some things to happen to me from a positive standpoint. And so if you receive what I just said to you, it's getting ready to happen in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. So thank you, God. For what you're doing. God, you're opening doors for your people and you're moving us like never before. And so with that sake, I want you to get your minds ready today. Get yourself together today and realize, okay, there's a change about to happen to me. I'm about to receive some wisdom this morning and things are going to change in my life. I'm coming against sickness. I'm coming against that this morning. I'm coming against anything that's preventing you from receiving Everything that God has in store, I'm coming against that this morning. So wisdom shall happen. Anointing shall begin to ooze out of you and begin to flow. So we, we give God the praise this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. So as we prepare for uh, Elder to come up with the praise team, we're just going to move in that direction of Psalms and hymns. That's what he commands us to do with Psalms and hymns and lead from there with Come in with the word in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, so Lord. we give him praise, we give him honor, we give him glory. In Jesus' name we pray. So come on, Elder, you ready. Come on and let God be God in your life. Let him move on you. Let him work it out in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God, for a brand new day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I think about the Lord on this morning, I just amazing grace. So please let's yes, just bring Lord. a little bit of that to the Lord this morning. Because he's been so wonderful. And yes, it's just because Lord. of his amazing grace that we are still here. Yes, Lord. Amazing grace How sweet the Thank you. 
Things that we thought. 
and change that situation. Yes, so I'm in awe of God because he has that type of power in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right, go with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, I come to you now. I thank you for what you're about to do. I've already dispatched the angels. I've already dispatched the angels, Father. And I've already summoned the Holy Spirit to come into this atmosphere. And God, I have invited your presence through El Elyon to come into this atmosphere. So, Heavenly Father, I decrease as you begin to increase right now in the mighty name of Jesus. So move us in a direction, God, that's pleasing in your sight. This do not, Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Go to the book of Matthew, if you would, and go into chapter 6 of the book of Matthew, if you would, please. That was six sermons ago when God told me to press the reset button. And so we pressed the reset button, and we went back, and we explained to you who God is. And then we come back and we explain to you who Jesus, his son, is and was and what he was purposed to do in his land. Then we came back and we talked to you about who the Holy Spirit is. And Jesus said, I'm going to leave now. I'm going to leave you a comforter. Some of your Bibles may say a helper. We talked about those three trinities. Then he began to tell us about some attributes of what Jesus did to us by giving us the anointing and by leaving us with some things that we could do in order to be successful in this world. Then he gave us a command that says, you can do this, you can make it. You can do this, you can make it. He, he gave us those particular uh, uh, pushes, those particular inspirations to say, you can make it. And then he come back and say, all you gotta do is just do it. But today I want to, I want, I want to, to embark upon something different. The only way that you know how to get to God is if you know his language. The only way that you know how to talk to Jesus is if you know his language. If I were to speak to you and you were to speak to me in Japanese, Portuguese, or whatever it is, you would be speaking to me a language that I don't quite understand. But if you were to speak to me in English, then I would know what you were saying. So today I want to teach you how to talk to God. Today I want to teach you how to ask God of things. And today I want to teach you how to, to talk the very language that God wants us to speak so that he would fully understand, not that he don't understand, don't get me wrong, don't misunderstand me, but God knows everything that's coming out of your mouth, you already know what was in your heart before you even said it. But I want you now to be able to be communicative with God, I want you now to be effective with God. And I want you now to understand there's a language that I must speak in order to get my prayers answered in the mighty name of Jesus. So I want to give you a title today. This is going to be an ongoing series until I get to all seven of these prayers. But today I want to talk to you about the power of prayer. I want to talk to you today about the power of prayer. I also want to introduce to you and I want to talk to you about there is seven types of prayer. I want to begin doing a series on each one of your seven so that at the end of the seventh, I want you to fully understand. I know the difference of how I'm praying and how I'm talking to God. And I understand now why God is not blessing me the way that I think he should because I'm crossing up the prayers. So today I want to talk to you and I want to give you the seven prayers. And don't worry about them. I'm just going to tell you, but don't worry about them because as we begin to do the series, I'm going to introduce the very ones to you again. The prayer of faith. We're going to be talking about the prayer of faith today. There's a prayer called the prayer of worship that we're going to go towards. There's a prayer that called the prayer of the Holy Spirit and how we go in and evoke and empower and release the Holy Spirit in our prayers. There is a prayer of the Holy Spirit. There's a prayer called a corporate prayer that when we come together and we come together as one, we'll begin to move like never before under a corporate prayer. We begin to bring Jesus into this thing. There's a prayer called the prayer of intercession. As God began to move you into the gap of somebody else's life who is falling short of maybe not understanding, but there's a prayer of intercession that God has placed upon us. There's a prayer of thanksgiving that when we begin to pray the prayer of faith and you, and you intertwine it with the prayer of thanksgiving, even though you're praying to God, you're mixing the two. And I want to be able to help you to understand how to direct your prayer so that God can truly understand what you're saying. And then there's a prayer of consecration. That as we begin to move, God will consecrate you and he will strengthen you. And he will give you your heart desire as we begin to move this morning. 
Those are the seven prayers. Those are the series that I'm headed towards as God begins to bless us. But today, I want to expound on the prayer of faith. I want to talk to the prayer of faith because God wants us to move like never before as we begin to get ourselves together in the prayer of faith. Malachi 1 verse 11 tells us, For from the rising of the sun, even to his going down, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. You and I are Gentiles. Who wasn't from, from Nazareth. So you and I are considered Gentiles. Who wasn't of the Jewish sect because who wasn't of the Jewish sect were considered Gentiles. So uh, Malachi 1 and verse 11 says, From the rising of the sun, even to the going down of it, my name shall be great among us, me and you. And so as we begin to flow, we understand that by the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall Confess, as we begin to move a little deeper into Isaiah, I want to go to Isaiah uh, chapter 60, verse 1, where it says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Rise, arise, and shine, for your light has come. So as we begin to pray, as you begin to talk to God, as you begin to move like I'm going to teach you how to move today, you will arise. And when you arise, that means that you are entering into an atmosphere that you're not quite uh, familiar with. You're going to enter into an atmosphere that you're not quite awoken to. And you're going to enter into an atmosphere that God is going to bless you mightily. He says, your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The glory of the Lord, because when you begin to talk to me in English and you begin to give me some understanding of the things that I've been going through and you begin to help me, you begin to enlighten me. You begin to cause me to rise up from that stupor that had me down. So when when you begin to speak to God in the prayer of faith, you're going to arise and you're going to shine. Why? Because the light of God is shining upon you and he's strengthening your faith. He says miraculous signs and wonders shall follow those that truly believe. Prayer is more than just talking to God. Some people say, well, you know what? Just talking to God is prayer. Oh, no, that's just not it. I know, it, I know that's the watered down version of it. It's just talking to God. I even said that, but I had to go back and get myself together. Praying is not talking to God. Praying is commanding God. Prayer is commanding God to stand on his word and do what he has purposed to do that he told us that you and I will do. Because he said in Malachi 4 and verse 2, he says, But to you who fear my name, the sons of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. Uh, that's Malachi 4 and 2. He says, But to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. So when you begin to pray, when you begin to pray like I'm going to teach you to pray, when you begin to call upon the name of Jesus, you are simply using what has been placed upon you according to Luke 9 and 1 and 2, that I have given you the authority to lay hands on the sick and they shall pray and they shall recover. I have given you the power to cast out demonic spirits. So now you have the power, you have the authority, and right now you have the permission to begin to call upon the name of Jesus and begin to talk to him in his language and he'll be able to help you move for you from where you came from. Jesus said, but when you pray, which means you you shall always pray and pray on purpose. Pray is a line of communication straight to Jesus who goes straight to God. Prayer is a line of communication that goes straight to Jesus. It goes to Jesus because the Bible says he said he got the right hand of the Father. And you can't get to the Father unless you go through the Son. So it's a straight line of communication to Jesus. And Jesus takes that to God and God disseminates that back to Jesus who, who brings it back to us and he begins to help us. But to pray in faith, I got to tell you what faith is and I got to, uh, uh, I got to embark upon what faith is. And even though you know it, just humor me today. Just humor me today. I know you heard this, and we, but, but I want to expound on this because as I begin to flow, I want to be able to go back and say, you got this and you know this and you've heard this. But Hebrews 11 and verse 1 tells us, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. We're talking about the prayer of faith this morning. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So if I'm praying in the prayer of faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for. So I'm praying for something that I'm hoping for, but the evidence of it has not yet manorized, has not yet uh, uh, came to the present, has not yet but begin to be in front of me. 
Faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. So when I begin to go into a, a prayer, when you come up to the altar and you say, Pastor, I need for you to pray for me. When you text me, when you call me, you simply say, Pastor, I need for you to go in and pray the prayer of faith for me and over me because there's some things happen to me I don't quite understand. And so when you bring that to me, he says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. What you're praying for has not happened. What you're asking God for has not yet manifest. So you're saying, Pastor, I need for you to touch and agree with me that what I'm hoping for in God is going to happen. That's the prayer of faith. But Hebrews 11 and 3 tells us, by faith we understand that the world was framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen was not made of the things which are not which are visible. Say it again, Pastor. Because when I read this, it, it really enlightened me and it really helped me to understand some things. And let me read it to you again. Hebrews 11 and verse 3 says, By faith we understand that the word of God was framed. So this word was framed by the word of God. We know in, in Genesis, he said uh, this day, he said that. The Bible says he's, he said it in his seat. And he said it in his seat. So Jesus never put his hands on God. Never put his hands to, to work in this world, to bring it together. He simply spoke it and he saw it. He simply spoke it and he saw it. So we understand that this word was framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of the things which are visible. So that the things that you see in this world, it was not made from the things that you see in this world, but it was made from a spiritual context. It was made from a spiritual setting, and it was made so that you and I will have the power to speak things that be not as though it were, and we get right up there with God and begin to do the same thing, because Colossians tells us, let this mind that is in Christ Jesus be also in you. So if we look at, uh, uh, whoo, Colossians whew, 1 and verse 10. Praise the name of Jesus. Colossians 1 and verse 10. My God, my God, my God, as I begin to put this together this morning. He said that you may have a walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good works, and increasing in the knowledge of God. So as I begin to talk to you about this prayer called the prayer of faith, I want you to be able that you may have a walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. So as you begin to pray this prayer of faith, you're going to have a walk that has that's fully pleasing to God. And you're going to be fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God. Because when you speak to God in his language, when you speak to God in his words, when you command God to do what he said he was going to do, he will show up and he will give you your heart desire because he's God. Because he'll work it out for you. Now turn to the book of Matthews, please. Whew. Turn to the book of Matthews as we begin to break it down just a little bit. Because I need for you to understand where we're going today. Almost two seconds ago, I was trying to bring in that word and trying to introduce us to some things. And Satan was trying to turn it off. He was trying to cut it off because he knew that today we'll be talking about prayer. So if he could kill my voice then, we would never get here now. But the prayers of the righteous avail of much. And because of it, here we are now. We're in the midst of talking to God, talking to Jesus. And we begin to move into Matthew, the, the sixth chapter. And I, and I want you to, to be able to hear this, that when the, the God began to pray, he was, Jesus began to pray, and he was in this certain place. And when he was in this certain place, he began to pray. And the disciples, after Jesus had finished praying, the disciples said, hey, God, Lord, they said, hey, Jesus, how... How you do that? Can you teach us to pray? Can you teach us? Because we see that when you pray, whatever you ask for, it's manifest. And But we don't know how to pray, so can you teach us how to pray? And so look at uh, chapter 6 of, of Matthew, and look at uh, verse 5. He said, when you pray, you should not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue on the corner of the street, that they may be seen by men. And surely I say to you, they have their rewards. In other words, they're just saying loud words, they're saying it over and over and over. They're just pretenders. They're just simply pretenders. People that are standing out there trying to look godly, trying to act like they have so much of God. But God says these are hypocrites. So he don't want us to be like that. But when you pray, so God is saying when you pray. In other words, God is saying you ought to pray. God says, I'm commanding you to pray. But when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut the door, pray to your father who is in secret place. 
Now, he's saying not necessarily you going into a closet unless you've created in your home a closet. But what he's saying is get to yourself so that when you talk to me, everybody is not in our business. My business and your business, says the Lord, that what you say to me is going to be between me and you. So get to that secret place and shut the door. Now, if you've created a closet in your home, which I have, I go into that closet and I close that door because I got to literally take him at his word. And when I go into that closet and close the door, I got to pray to God in secret. And I begin to see uh, some things that was, he said that is prayed for in secret, it shall come to pass. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. So there's some things that I go in and I talk to God about sex. I even go into God and I bring up some of you. I begin to bring up some of you. I begin to talk about some of you as I go into that secret place because I know God will meet me there. He'll meet me here. He'll meet me driving on the road. But I know when I get there, he'll meet me there and he'll begin to talk to me about some things. But I begin to talk to God about prayer. I begin to talk to God, how do I teach your people how to pray? How, just like the disciples ask you, Jesus, how do you teach them how to pray? Pray God, use me this morning to teach your people how to do the very same thing that you've done in order to get the disciples to pray to get your people to pray. And so he says, first thing I want you to understand, verse 7 says, when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they will be heard of their many words. So in other words, if you go to me and you pray to me, every time you wake up, every time you go into the secret closet, every time you come to me to pray, you asking me for the same thing over and over and over and over. He says, don't do that because that's vain repetition. Remember now, faith is the Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So if you're going to me and you're praying to me, then you pray that prayer. I heard what you said because I'm not there, and I'm going to give you your heart desire. But when you leave me from that same setting of question, same setting of prayers, you got to know that I heard you. You got to know that I'm going to do it. You got to have the faith in me. See, some of us don't have the faith that God is going to bless us. We go in and we pray. We give them a five or ten minute prayer about how we want this happen, how we want that happen, but we don't leave in faith. We leave in concernment and discernment, trying to understand is God heard me. So you would reach out to someone else, my sister, my brother. Can you pray for me? Can you ask God to help me in this? But God says, I heard your prayer. God says, I'm going to strengthen you. God says, I'm going to work it out for you. But you got to have that faith when you pray to me because you got to know that I'm a rewarder of those that diligently seek me. Saints, are you diligently seeking God? If you're diligently seeking God, you don't need to pray to everybody else in your business, but you got to keep it directed towards you and God. Now, I'm not saying don't come to pastor and talk to him. Yeah, do that. Why? Because he says, I give you shepherds out of my own heart. So if I'm a shepherd over you, then yeah, bring it to me so that we can touch and agree and get, uh, let God get the glory. We will be justified as God begins to glorify. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is picking up the phone and calling A, B, C, and D, asking them to pray for you. It offends God because God says, I need for you to have the faith in me that when you talk to me, when you ask of me, ask of me and I'll hear you. Ask me and I'll bless you. But wait on the Lord, he says, and be of good courage. Wait, I say, on the Lord. If you just wait on him, the disciples said, Lord, teach us how to pray, but do not have vain repetition as the healers do, for they think they will be heard for their much word. Therefore, be like, therefore, do not be like, therefore, your father knows the things you have in need of, even before you ask of him. So he already knows, saints, what you have need of before you go in that closet, before you get on your knees, before you ask him of it. He already knows what you need of. So he says, ah, therefore, don't be like them, for the father knows the things you have in need of. He said, but in this manner, Pray therefore, our Father, who in heaven, how be your name? Our Father in heaven, how be your name? At that point, saints, you are recognizing and you are saying, you are my Father in heaven, how be your name? That means I want to dwell in your name. 
You're the Father in heaven, and I want to do the things you purpose me to do. I'm praying this because you're the Father in heaven, and I want you to move like never before. You are the Father. So he says, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So as you begin to pray to God, your first opening in the morning should be, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now, if you want to continue that prayer, that's totally up to you. But you have done what God, Jesus, told us to do when we get to pray. He said, our Father in heaven, how to be your name. So you go in and say, Lord, this is me, your daughter. This is me, your son. My Father, our Father in heaven, how to be your name. Now you have opened up the doors to say, God, I come to talk to you. To you, God, I'm knocking on the door for Jesus. I'm knocking on the door for the Holy Spirit. I'm knocking on the door for God. Our Father in heaven, you are my Father. I am your child. According to Psalms in 1, I declare and I decree that I am your son. I am your daughter. Now, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And so when you begin to say, hallowed be your name, you know that no every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that he is the Lord. He is the Lord of God. Everyone. So because of that, we're not only going to acknowledge that he's God in heaven, but we're going to acknowledge the power of his name. Y'all yes. with me, saints? You not only do you acknowledge him as the Father in heaven, but you're going to also acknowledge him as the power of his name. Because yes. by his name, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. It's only through the name of Jesus that man's life can be saved. So the first thing you do is you go in and you say, Our Father in heaven, you acknowledge your God. Hallowed be thy name. You acknowledge in his power, his power here on earth in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. Woo! And when you begin to do that, now you are now you are knocking on the door, and you begin to put your hand on the knob of that door. And when you begin to put your hand on the knob of that door, you begin to say, "God, my Father, Your name I'm standing upon. Look here, Jesus. I'm going through this situation, and the situation that I'm going through, Father. I know You already know what I'm going through, but Your Word says in Isaiah 43, God, You said, "Bring you back, bring us back." remembrance of what you said. And when you bring us back to the remembrance of what we said, Lord Jesus, that you said that you, you bring us through it, that you will acquit us of it. Isaiah 43, I'm going there so that I can read it verbatim because I don't want nothing to come against what we're trying to do this morning. Isaiah 43 and 25 says, I, even I, am he who blocks out your transgressions for my own sake and I will remember your sins no more. Put me in the remembrance of my of your sins. So now he's telling us in Isaiah 43 and 25 and 26. He says, put me in the remembrance of what you're saying. He says, and let us continue together. In other words, our Father, which are in heaven, then you come back, you say, hallowed be thy name. So now you're talking to God through our Father. Hallowed be thy name, you're talking about his power. And then he says here, put me in the remembrance of what I said. So before you go into that prayer, get that scripture that goes in course out. All you got to do is get on Google, and Google will tell you what that scripture is. You get that scripture, and you take it with you in that prayer. When you take it with you in that prayer, he says in Isaiah 43 and 25, put me in the remembrance of what I said. So now you got to say, Lord, your word says. Isaiah, I mean, uh, uh, Isaiah 61, you said in verse 7, it says, I shall receive a double portion for my shame. Whatever I've gone through, I shall receive a, a double portion. So this is just an example. And so you go in and you begin to tell God what you're going through. And then he says, let us contend together. Now, this is God saying, Jesus saying, the Holy Spirit saying, let me and you talk together about what you're going through. Now it's time for you to open up and say, Lord, I'm going through this situation. And things have happened to me like never before. I don't quite understand it. I don't know how to get out of it. But I'm praying to you, God, because you are the God of heaven. I'm standing on your word that you're going to make this happen for me. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So I don't see, I don't see the end, Father, but I'm hoping that you're going to help me. I'm hoping that you're going to move for me because this hope, God, is going to be my anchor that I'm going to put into your name, that I'm going to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of you because you are God. You will help me. You will strengthen me. So I'm praying in this situation to you, God. I'm praying in this situation that you can help me to pull out of this situation. I don't know what to do, but wisdom is the principal thing. And in all my getting, God, you told me to get an understanding. So I'm standing in the midst of you this morning. You are God. You are my heavenly Father.
Paul. I'm strengthened by you. I'm propelled by you. I'm gifted by you. I'm anointed by you. And your child is standing in front of you asking you to help me. Now you are talking to yes, God. Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. He said, put me in remembrance of what I said. Then he said, let us contend together. Then he said, state your case that you may be acquitted. Y'all see that? He says, state your case. This is Isaiah 43 and 27, no, 26. He said, state your case that you may be acquitted. So he's saying, when you come to me and you talk to me and you state your case, I'm going to acquit you of what you're going through. I don't know about you, but I would be glad to hear this gavel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ sound the gavel on this poverty that I'm going through. Sound the gavel of this healing that I so need. Sound the gavel of this strength I desire. Sound the gavel that I don't have to come back this way no more. And sound the gavel that my enemy won't continue to come against me. And sound the gavel that this pain that I'm feeling my body. I don't have to worry about these pills no more. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for God to sound that gavel. Because when he sounds the gavel, it's all the way. You don't have to worry about it no more. He will bless you. Amen. He will work it out. Amen. But there are some things that you've got to do to line yourself up with where God is trying to get you to Amen. understand. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. But if you pray the prayer of faith, and then you come in with the prayer of consecration, and then you come in with the prayer of worship, you know and void the prayer that you pray for, for faith. Are y'all with me? Yes. Prayer is us communicating with God. But in a channel that he quite understands what you're going through. Now I'm not trying to deter you to tell you don't pray. I know you're going to pray. I know you're going to talk to God. I know you're going to do that. But if you're going to pray different prayers and you finish the prayer of faith, you say amen. And then you go into the prayer of worship. Amen. Then you go into the prayer of comfort. Amen. Why? Because you're telling God, I'm distinguishing the two, the seven, and I'm coming to you with my arms up and my heart open wide, and I'm going to pray to you according to what I know is right. Watch this. James 5, 13 through 60 says, If anyone among you suffers, let him pray. If anyone cheerful, let him sing songs. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of Jesus. And the prayer of faith. Mm -hmm. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. So when you go in, and I just showed you how to go in. I showed you how to talk to God. And I showed you how to keep that faith. He said the, the, the prayer of faith would not only save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and he has committed sin, he will be forgiven. So are you praying the prayer of faith, or are you praying vain repetition as the heathens does? Go ahead and we say, Lord, I need this, and Lord, I want you to do this, and Lord, will you help me with that? And then Monday you come back with Wednesday, Lord, I need this, and I, and I need for you to help me with this, and, this. and then here come Friday, Lord, I need this, and I want this. You were praying, praying repetitions, but God says, where is your faith? I heard you the first time. Where is your faith? I'm going to work it out for you, but where is your faith? Now, this is how you get by that. This is how you get by that. On Monday, you go in and he says, Our Father, which out in heaven, how be your name? You go in on Monday, you say, Father, you are my God in heaven. All things on earth is bowing at the name of Jesus. Then he says, Bring us in, let us contend together. So you begin to talk to him. Now you say, Lord, I have this bill that's been coming at me and I don't know how to fix it. I don't have a finance to, 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 to satisfy this bill, this credit. I don't have finances. And God, I need for you to open up doors for me that I can find either a new job or get promoted on this job. But I need a way out, Father, of these finances that I have. Remember now, he says in Isaiah 43, 25, he says, let us contend together. So you told him right then what, what, you, what you was going through. Then, when you finish that prayer with amen, you get up, and then throughout the day, you ask God to open up a door for you. Throughout that day, you say, God, thank you for opening up the door. Thank you that this bill is paid. So you went from prayer of faith to the prayer of thanksgiving. 
Thank you, God, that this bill is paid. Thank you, God, that the doors have been opened. Thank you, God, that I don't have this worry no more. Thank you, God. You see what I just done? I moved from the prayer of faith because when I went to God, I prayed the prayer of faith. But Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I prayed the prayer of thanksgiving because I'm no longer worried about what I ask God for. I'm thanking him for what he's going to do about that situation. Yeah. So I'm no longer, I'm no longer asking God to bless me with that, with that avenue for finances. I'm thanking Him and I'm asking Him now, open up that door for me because I know it's already open. I've already prayed to you. You give me that anointing to pray to you. And whatsoever I ask for in prayer and believe it, you said I shall receive it. Mark 9 and 23 tells us that Jesus said to him, if you could just believe, all things are possible to him that believe. So now when you pray to me, do you truly believe what you ask for when you pray to me? Or were you just doing vain repetitions like the heathens does and don't know about answers to or not? No, the devil is a liar. Today we're not going to pray that way no more. Today we're going to go in, we're going to pray that prayer, and now we're going to start seeking God for the outcome of that prayer. We got to seek it now for the outcome of that prayer. So when I go into my closet and I and I got you your name on my prayer and I begin to talk to God about you, now I'm waiting on you to contact me and says, Pastor, prayers has been answered. Pastor, this has come about me. Pastor, that's happening for me. Why? Because I know the effective fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. The Bible says it's powerful and effective. And so if I go in to pray for you, I'm looking for you to contact me and say, Pastor. It's done. It's done. I'm not going to go on that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday praying the same prayer for you. I'm going to pray that prayer on Monday, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm waiting on you to hit me back. Says, Pastor, prayer's answered. I'm going to hit you back. Says, Whoo, another prayer answered. I got to move to the next situation. That's how I know the power of God moves. And that's how I know that God has been moving on some of you. Because sometimes I get that response and say, Pastor, God has blessed me. God is working it out for me. And so watch this. Uh -uh. You don't have to go down and read to you. James, uh, fifth chapter, and verse 16 says, the latter part of that, the affectionate, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. He said the effective, fervent prayer. So your prayer can be effective if you do it correctly. Your fervent is you continuously praying because First Thessalonians said, pray about everything. Pray without ceasing. So now when you begin to pray about everything, when you begin to pray without ceasing, you are giving God the praise. You are thanking Him for it. But when you are ready to go in and get God to move on some things, when you're ready to go in, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You begin to go in and you begin to talk to God and you begin to reverence his name. Then you go in and state your case. Let us contend together and state your case. State your case the best that you know how. But I'm telling you, saints, hear me when I tell you this. Before you go into the secret place, before you go into your secret closet, find the scripture that coincides with what you're going through. Because he says, bring me back into the remembrance. Isaiah 43, 25 says, bring me back to the remembrance of what I said. So when you go into that secret place to pray and you got your ammunition with you and you begin to say, Lord, your word says, the Bible says, Hebrews 6 and 18, that Jesus won't do immutable things. It's impossible for him to lie. So he can't lie. He said, heaven and earth shall pass away before my word does. Remember now, this word was framed by the word of Jesus. This atmosphere was framed by the word of Jesus. So heaven and earth will pass away before his word does. So he can't lie. He said, I swore unto immutable things. It's impossible for God to lie. So when you begin to get your ammunition together, and then you go into that prayer, I know, you know, through, Christ, through religion, through religion, we got to close our eyes. We got to bow our heads through religion. But saints, if you don't know what you're looking at, you got to open your eyes. And you got to say, okay, Lord, your word says, according to this, chapter whatever, 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 verse whatever, according to this, chapter whatever, 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 you said this, God. 
And then you begin to give God the praise. You're in the closet. You're talking to God. You're in your secret place. You're talking to God. You're driving in your car. You're talking to God. Begin to use what he says. Isaiah 43 and 25. Put me into the remembrance of what I said. Then he says, state your case. Well, what's your case? My case is that I'm coming against a situation that I don't quite understand. I don't know how to get out of this situation, but you do. You said, come to me, honest burger, and have me later. Take my yoke and learn of me, for my yoke is easy, my burden is light. So, Father, my yoke is easy, my yoke is hard, my burden is heavy, and I'm praying to you because that's what your word says. So now you are praying the prayer of faith. And then when you finish, you simply say, amen. What Satan's going to do, he's going to bring it to you really later on that day. Ask God again to help you with that bill. Later on that day, ask God again to help you with that bill. Lord, please help with this bill. This thing's getting overwhelmed. I don't know what to do no more about this bill. People calling me, and they're trying to get up with me. Lord, I don't have the money. What, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And then Satan said on Tuesday, Keep asking God again about the prayer. He's asking you. He, he, he hear you. You see, because Satan knows if I can get you in an error, then I can get you from the power that God has in store in you. So that's why he deceives us. Satan knows who God is. He knows who Jesus is. He knows how powerful the Holy Spirit is because he's been there. He knows how to get us off point, and he knows how to get us off track. But today, Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So you got to go in that conversation with faith. You got to go in there with your admonition. And then you begin to let God know. And then he says, state your case. And then after you state your case, 25 says, put me in remembrance. Let us contend together. State your case that you may be acquitted. I'm going to quit you, says God. But you got to believe in me. I'm going to acquit you of what you're going through, but you got to believe me. Saints, can you, at this particular moment right now, just think about something that was happening to you maybe six months ago that you had no clue how you was going to get out of it. You prayed, you prayed, you prayed, you prayed, you prayed, but you had no clue how you was going to get out of it. But today you don't still have that same problem. Because God heard your prayers, and you Pray the prayer of faith, even though you was praying uh, uh, vain repetitions like the heathens, you was doing it. But at the same time, God says, I heard what you said. I'm going to bless you. But he sent pastor here this morning to tell you that you don't need to continue to pray, pray, pray that same prayer. But you're going to have to begin to move in a direction of faith. Because faith is the subject of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Saints, that's how you get your prayers answered is through the faith. Faith is a powerful word. Faith is the vehicle that's going to lead you to success. Faith is the vehicle that's going to get God aroused, get Jesus aroused. My daughter is praying to me, and she said I was supposed to do this, and she said I was supposed to do that. My son says that he did and he's going through this. I got to get down and see about my child because uh, Isaiah 45 says, 45 and 3 says, I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places. That you may know that I am the Lord who calls you by your name and the God of Isaiah. That was Isaiah 45 and verse 3 says, I will give you the treasures of darkness. So whatever you're going through finances, God says, I'm going to give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places. So that means now new avenues of resources is going to begin to open up for you. And then he says that you may know that I am the God. I am your Lord. So God wants us to begin to pray the prayer of faith and believe him. Then he says, who call you by your name. So God is calling each and every one of us by our names. Then in Isaiah 45, in verse 7, he, he begins to, sh to shoot us his resume. I formed the light and created darkness. I made peace and created calamity. I, the Lord, does all these things. Well, so now, I want you to hear this part in Isaiah uh, 45, verse 8. Rain down, you heaven, from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open. Let the bring forth salvation. And let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, has created this. So now when you go into the prayer of faith, you brought your admonition with you. God says, 
I formed the light and created the darkness. That's who you're praying to. I made peace and created calamity. That's who you're talking to. I, the Lord, does all these things. And then he begins to saturate the prayers with this. Rain down, you heavens, from above. So he began to tell the heavens, open up heavens, and begin to pour blessings on my child. That they won't have room enough to receive. And let the skies pour down righteousness. Okay, righteousness is just simply right standings in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Righteousness. And then he says, righteousness is justification. So not only not only will the skies pour down righteousness, but they will pour down justification. And then now you're going to be justified in what you're doing. And Jesus Christ is going to be glorified because you're going to get in the praise. Oh my God, y'all better hear me tonight. And so he began to talk to us. And he says, rain down from heaven and, and let the skies rain down righteousness. And let the earth open and let them bring forth salvation. Let the earth open and let them bring forth salvation. So in your prayer of faith, salvation simply means to be separated from. Salvation simply means to be separated from. So in your prayer, he's saying to you that let salvation begin to reign. Open up the earth and break down salvation and let righteousness spring up. Right standing spring up. Let right standing spring up. So now he's going to separate you with salvation and he's going to allow right standing to spring up. That I, the Lord, do all these things. I, the Lord, have created all of this. He created this for you and I, saints. That's why when Jesus was down here, he go to pray. He went to pray. He was praying the prayer of faith. When Jesus began to pray in the garden of Gethsemane, he says, Lord, take this bitter cup from me. Not my will, Lord. Nevertheless, let your will be done. He was saying, take this bitter cup from me. God, take this sin from me because I have prayed the prayer of faith. And if you allow sin to come into what I'm asking for, it will, it will, it will normally void what I just prayed to you for. So take this sin away from me. Jesus Christ, God, the Lord and Savior, he would not take that cup from Jesus because he said... This is the cup of sin that my whole world is accomplishing. He said, okay, Lord, then let your will be done. Let it be done. So when you come out of your prayer, you said, Lord, let your will be done. Jesus said, I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen just simply means I agree. It just simply means I agree. I agree, God. I agree that what I said to you is going to be done. I agree that you're the God of heavens. I agree that I'm your, your name and every, every knee shall bow. And it's by your name that everyone shall be saved. I agree that you've been purposed to come and help me. I agree, God, that you're going to release righteousness and salvation to me. I agree. So when you say amen, you'll say all these things. You'll say, Lord, I agree that you're God. Lord, I agree that you're going to help me. Lord, I agree that I've been saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized by you. Lord, I know that you're going to bless my children. I know that you're going to help me. Thank you, God, yes, for what you've done. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. You see, I, I told you this before. Uh, when I was a young man and I had a little hair on my head, and I was doing that and picking out, thought I was looking like somebody. But my mama would come and run her fingers through the through the hair to get to the crown of my head, and it made me mad because I was like, you know, it took me about forty-five minutes, mama. You know, <laughs> and then I ain't gonna run your fingers through it, and I got to go back in and try to pick it out. But you know, I'm trying to look good. You know, I was on the bus. You know, got my little hair going away. And so, but what she was doing, Elvin, she was yeah, she got me frustrated. But what she was doing was she wasn't gonna get on that bus with me. She wasn't going to go to school with me. She wasn't going to attend practice with the sports with me. But what she was doing was she was praying the prayer of faith over me that God will bless me, he will keep me covered under his blood, and he will bring me right back home to where I was supposed to be. So that's what she was doing. So then I didn't know what she was doing. But now I know that she was praying the prayer of faith because when I got myself in this new situation, that what she was praying over me was manifest. God protected me. God helped me. God yes. worked it out for me. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus, yes. when I was in that war zone, saints, bullets flying all around me, people dropping all around me, death was around me. But because I I had a prayer, Mother. Protect my son. Keep my yes. son. Work it out for my son. And when I begin to progress up that hill, and fire is coming all across my head and around my head, but none came like thee to, to, to knock me out. Friends falling to the side. Friends falling to that side. But I was reminding of Psalms 91. He, he said, A thousand are falling to your 
rights, uh, the knowledge of rights, uh, none shall not come like this. Why? Because she prayed a prayer of faith over me. Thank you, Lord. So when you go into prayer, the Lord says, when you pray, you go in and you pray that prayer of faith. Pray it over your children. Pray it over your husband if you got one. Pray it over your wife if you have one. Begin to pray that prayer. So God can begin to do the things. And then she didn't go back in each day and pray that same prayer. She said, Lord, thank you for, for protecting my children. Thank you. And she had four boys and two girls. And each one of us, she would anoint our heads and say the same thing. She prayed that prayer on Monday. But uh, uh, Tuesday through Saturday, she'd say it again. Lord, thank you for protecting my children. Thank you for protecting my children. Thank you for protecting my children. It didn't take a whole minute. It just took her 30 seconds. It's that. Five seconds is that. The first prayer. But the second prayer took about two seconds. Lord, protect my children. Why? She was praying the prayer of faith. She wasn't praying like heathen prayers like the sinners do, the hypocrites. You got to go in now, section. You got to redo some things now. You got to reschedule some things now. You got to re you got to remagnify. You got to amplify some things now. Do your homework. Do your homework. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing of the word of God. Then you get your homework. Your homework is your scripture. When you take your scriptures into your prayer closet with you. Take your scriptures into your prayer closet with you. And then you begin to use those scriptures as you begin to pray by faith. Saints, there's five things on my mirror, and I put on this, uh, the Bible says in Luke 9, 23, that he said unto him, if you could just believe, all things are possible to him that believe. There are two more things that I'm ready now that you come manifest. There's two more things that I'm saying, God, thank you that it's come to pass. Thank you that it's, I don't ask you for it no more. I'm thanking that it's coming to pass. Why? Because I know it is. Word has been sent that things are happening and lining up like it should line up. And I'm giving God the praise. And I'm thanking him for it. Then thank you, God, that what I'm praying for is coming. I've already asked him for it. So I don't need to go back and ask him, but I just need to thank him for it. In the mighty name of Jesus. This is what I'm trying to get you this morning. To go in that first initial prayer and talk to God like I've showed you through Isaiah 43. And like I showed you through Matthew 6 and the rest of the scriptures that we've talked about. But I want you to know that God does hear you. He's going to protect you. He's going to bless you. He's going to keep you covered under his blood. And I want you to stay in faith. I want you to stay in hope. I want you to stay in faith. And I want you to stay in hope. That God is going to bless you. Thank you, Lord. And He will, saints. Yes, Sometimes I've seen in this wartime situation where people I thought would live forever didn't make it through that situation. I often wonder, God, why you allow me? It's because of the fervent prayer of the righteous, of the faith of much. So since my mother was righteous, righteous. Did that affect the fervent prayer that she prayed over me consistently? Help me to get through some of the worst times ever in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. I've seen death. I've seen death up close. I've seen death leave the body. I've seen death where I had to go tell the parents that they left the body. Wasn't a good scene. So your pastor has been exposed to some things. Where I have to believe in God. I have to know that God blessed me. And I have to know that God called me here as a pastor. Or else I'd be somewhere on somebody's corner with Crown Royal in my hand. Trying to fill the field of life. But today the devil is a liar. Because whatsoever I ask for in prayer and believe it, I shall receive it. So when you say, Pastor, I need prayer. I'm going to rise to the occasion because I know where he brought me from. Thank you, Lord. I know what he's doing to me. And I know how he's strengthening me. And when you say, Pastor, I'm about to do this, pray the prayer for me. Okay, da da da. I got to do my closet. And I got to get my scriptures. And I got to go in. And now I'm waiting on a text from you, call from you to say, Pastor, it's done. It's done. Where did God bring you from? <laughs> Where did God bring you from? That's causing you to go back from where you came. He brought you from there. To get you here. To take you there. Not to go back from which you came. To go there. There's so much waiting for you over there. But if Satan can keep you frustrated, he can keep you not, he can keep you wary, he can keep you thinking that God is not answering you, then you'll never get there. So today I want you to change the way you pray. Change your prayer life. Change your prayer life. Put scripture in that thing. 
begin to acknowledge God. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be that name. Don't go to that second scripture yet. Don't go there yet, because we're not ready for that yet. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be that name. Go there. And then begin to state your case. I know I, I know I keep talking about the same thing, but you got to get this, because if you get this, you will no longer worry about if your prayers are going to be answered, but you're going to walk in prosperity. You're going to walk into prosperity. Prosperity in your home. Prosperity in your vehicles. Prosperity in your children's life. Prosperity in your husband or your wife's life. You're going to walk into prosperity. So see, I want you to understand this also, uh, 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 congregation. I want you to understand this. When you go to someone and you say, can you pray for me? Do you really know if that person truly knows how to pray for you? You know, back when me and Ellen was, uh, Ellen Baker was, you know, young folks, they used to say uh, in church that those that know the words of prayer, pray much for me in the name of the Lord. Those that know the word of prayer, okay, they were simply saying, there are seven different types, and can you distinguish between the seven which one to pray over me? My God. And so they don't know the seven types and they don't know how to pray over you, then they may cause harm to you because they're praying a prayer that's not been heard by God. So now they're praying repetition, and that repetition is not going to be heard by God. Well, God hears everything, but he's not going to answer because they said they got their reward because standing in the synagogue, they got their reward, which means that they got their reward by praying over you, by saying it out loud to the people that people can hear them for their much praying. But he says, it didn't affect me because you didn't do what I said to do. Y'all witness saints. So you can't go to everyone that says because he preached a good sermon, you want to run up to him and say, hey, can you pray for me? Hey, can you lay hands on me? Hey, can you do this? Don't do that because you're not sure everybody knows the words of prayer to how to get to God. There's people that go to college to be motivational speakers, and they can speak very well and motivate you, but is it spiritual? Is it from God? And had it led you and touched you in a way like never before to open up your wisdom and knowledge. That's what we're about now. We're about knowledge. We're about wisdom. We're about understanding. We're about getting God to manifest some things in our life. I don't need no motivational speaker. I need God. I need his word. I need a scripture so that I can stand on it. So in the nighttime when he's not there, when the nighttime when that motivation speaker is not there, I need a leg to stand on. I need to know what God says about what I'm going through. Pastor, where that scripture at that you were reading about this pastor? Where is this and where is that? You've got to understand that when you begin to pray and you bring it to God, now you obligate God. You obligate God when you bring back the words that he said to say to him. When you obligate God, he will show up. He'll show up in time. I am a witness that he will show up, and he'll show up in time. Yes, he'll show up, saints. I've been into some situations where there's no way I should be standing in front of you this morning, but he showed up, and he showed out on time. And because he did that, I'm standing in front of you now trying to teach you how to do what I've done to get where I'm at right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Saints, he'll work it out. Yes, he will. Listen to me now. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Pray the prayer of faith because the affection fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. The Bible says in James, it's powerful yes, and it's effective. Yes, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Awesome word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for letting me stay on point, on track. Yes, Lord. We serve our God. So now, when I text you all this week, I need to know that you change your way of praying, your style of praying, and that you're getting manifestation, and that you're standing on what you talk to God for and about. You stand on it. And I'm going to need to know that you're not saying that same thing over and over and over and over again, like vain just like he was. Because he said, I have given you the power to lay hands on the sick and they share a cover. So if you are sick in your body about anything, mm -hmm. you can lay hands on your head and you shall recover. And 
testimony. I was a couple of weeks back. I could lay down on the bench and I would get up, and, and it seemed like the, the world was going around. I was like, "What in the world going on with me?" And I could be walking, and I get just as dizzy. I could find something to hold on to. What in the world is going on with me? So I had to say, "Lord, your word says that I can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover." Even though I'm talking about myself now, I had to lay hands on my own head. And I had to declare, declare faith, the prayer of faith over my own head. And since I prayed that prayer, since I don't get this no more. I don't get this no more. I don't get it no more. I can, I can move now. I, I can do now. I can lay it on that. Do, I can do I can do whatever I want to do. But prior to that, I have to lay flat on the bed. And if I get up straight, oh, Lord. I got a drunk before that. But I want, to, I want you to understand that God will bless you. He'll bless you mighty. He'll bless you quickly. But you got to go in with that prayer of faith. Thank you, Lord. He said, I give you the power to lay hands on the sick. So if they're sick in your body, lay hands on you and recite what God says and watch He heals you. He said, I give you authority to cast out the mother spirits. So whatever's coming against you, begin to use that authority that you already have and make Satan stop in his tracks. He's been beating us too long. Today it stops. We got to now beat on him. We got to now beat on him. Saints, we got to now beat on him. In the mighty name of Jesus. And watch this. When you begin to beat on him, prosperity come for your children. Prosperity come for your family. Prosperity come for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, the prayer of faith, the prayer of faith. Listen, if you're not saved, want to be saved, come down, come down, come down. If you are saved, thank God for you. And thank God that you made that decision to be saved. Bible tells us in Romans 10 and verse 9, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. And it's with your mouth that you confess and with your heart that you believe. And because of that, if you confess, God will bless you. If you if you just ask God to touch you, he will. He will save you, since he wants to save you. And then the Bible says the angels in heaven is going to rejoice when you got saved. So if you want the angels to rejoice over you, come on and get saved. Come on and get saved. Come on and get saved. And let God begin to bless you. Because all the things that I've spoken to you today, if you're not of God, it won't work for you because you're simply not his child. That's a prayer. So those of you that just want to touch and agree with me this morning, we're going to pray a corporate prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for who you are for what you've done. Father, we're gathered together in your name, and we're thanking you right now for how you're going to bless us. We're gathered together in your name, we thank you now for how you're going to work it out. In the mighty name of Jesus. So strengthen us, God, and help us and move us like never before. God, if there's anyone sick among us, heal them now from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet. Thank you now, God, for who you are and for what you've done. Thank you now, God, for blessing us and moving us like never before. God, as we operate in this corporate prayer, you say where three is gathered together, you said you'd be in the midst of us. So because you're in the midst of us, God, I know you're going to bless us. I know you're going to heal us. You said heaven and earth shall pass away before your word does it. So because of it, God, I give you praise. I give you all and I give you glory because you're God. So thank you now, God, for blessing us. Thank you now, God, for working it out. And thank you now, God, for how you're going to continue to flow with us. This do now, Father, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to move towards tithing. Praise your name. Yeah, but mine. Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. But this I say, he who sold sparingly will also reap sparingly. He 
He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a true forgiver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you, always having all sufficiencies in all things, may have an abundance for every good works. So God is looking at what you're doing, and he's working it out for you. So now, if you want to be a blessing to the house, uh, you go to your phone, you would go with 77977. Go to 77977 uh, and then, then uh, do EH give in the text queue and then press and send it and it'll send you to a link. And that, that link will begin to uh, give you options as to how to do it. 77977 and God will bless you for doing so. But if you say, Pastor, I just didn't get that, uh, give me an easier route to take. And you go to dollar sign 3177 J, lowercase J, and your cash app. And then you can send that with some instructions on so place this here, place that there. We do have uh, people sending it there, and God is blessing them mightily. So, saints, I'm, I'm, I'm imploring you now. I'm, I'm, I'm calling you out now and say, we got to be moved into the power of God. We got to move today in our giving, and we got to move today so that God can bless us mightily. So, go with me in prayer again. Father, in the name of Jesus, your word says that whatsoever we ask for in prayer and believe it, we shall receive it. So right now, Father, I'm asking you to bless this basket, everything that's in it, and the people that gave you, Father, bless them. That their house shall be full, their vet shall be full, their refrigerator shall be full, their car gas tank shall be full, because they was obedient to the giving, Father. You said they shall meet all sufficiencies of all things. So whatever aspect of their life that they're looking for, God, their finances has been placed. So God, you said that you would give, God. You said that you would expound. You said you would move towards it. In the mighty name of Jesus, you said you would give a hundredfold. So God, we're standing on a hundredfold of the giving this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, so we thank you now, God, for what you're about to do. In Jesus' name, we pray over this finance and through the, the internet, God, we thank you for what you're doing with the people that's looking and listening and want to sow that seed. We thank you for them as well, Father. As I hold up this basket, there too is in this basket. So we give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We're almost there, saints. We're almost there. Hallelujah. All right. Before we move out. Anyone have a testimony? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I love testimony. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Wow. Thank you. Perfect prayer. Right. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. I've been affected. I asked you that question because I couldn't hardly hear you. Uh, like this. Yeah. I tell my wife sometimes, girl, you use that outside voice in the inside. <laughs> I can hear you. You know, sometimes I've been around loud sounds, cannons going out, but I can't hear sometimes, so I can get close to you, so I can hear you. <laughs> it's all right, though. It's all right. Anyone else have testimony? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, I want to thank the Lord for allowing me to retire this Friday. Woo! Praise the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. 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 Yes,
Break up those germs, God, and just give her strength. Yes, so let her know, God, yes, you can continue to go forth in yes, my name. Because I am your power and I am your strength, Father. Yes, Lord. Remember Sister Elos and Brother Harvey of Robinson, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, you sit right there with her day in and day out, yes, God. I just ask you to heal her, Lord. To give her strength, God. Strength the mind to know that you're there with her, God. No Thank matter you, what is happening, Father. Thank you. Strengthen her husband as he waits on the side and assists, God. I ask you to remember Sister Maxwell Robinson, Lord. Let me strengthen her, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Remember the Highsmith family, Lord, when they go through this and that, God. Yes. Let them know, Lord, that you're still God. You're still. That you're still powerful, yes. that you're still almighty, yes. that you're still our Father, yes. Lord, one that loves us, that cares yes. for us, God. Yes, that is knowing everything that's happening to us right now, God. And you're still working it out for us, Lord, even Thank though the way may look dark, God. Thank you, Lord. Remember Miss Shelby, God. Yes, As she aches in her body, God, I ask for strength, Lord, for Mother Shelby, God. Yes. In the name of Jesus, yes, Lord. Lord. She's your daughter. She leans and depends on you, God. Continue to strengthen her, Lord. Yes. Lord, bless Sister Amber and her family on today, Father. Thank you, God, that she has another birthday on today, God. Yes, yes, Lord. That she's grateful to you, Lord, that all that you've done for her, Father. Yes, Lord. Lord, I ask you to remember the Murphy family. Yes, Brother Bobby and Sister Clara, Lord, is yes, they sit there in their homes, God. I just ask you, Lord, to strengthen them, Father. When they're going through death, Lord, in their family, Lord. Help them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Remember Brother Norman Murphy, Lord, and Brother Ronald Murphy, Lord, and Sister Darlene Murphy, Father. I just ask you right now to continue blessing, strengthen them, Lord. Remember Latrice, God, which they said has cancer, Lord. I just ask you to touch your body and heal, Lord, in the name of Jesus, God. Thank you, Father, that you are here, God. Yes, Remember Lord. Minister Ham and her family, God. Yes, bless and strengthen them, Lord, in the name of Jesus, God. Father, I just ask you to bless and strengthen Sister Rochelle and her family, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father, that you raised up Sister Betty, Lord, and that you have her in the house on today, God. Yes, Continue Lord. strength for your daughter, Lord, yes, in the name of Jesus, God. Thank you, Father, for all that you've done for us, Lord. We tell you thank you, God. We bless you, God. Because, Lord, you've been so wonderful, Lord. Yes, you are an amazing God, Lord. Yes, and nothing is too hard for you, Lord. So let your will be done, Lord, in your people, God. All over this world, we pray, Lord, in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that the word is going forth of everyone that was on that list. You said, God, bring it to the altar, and the elder would pray the prayer of faith, and the sickness shall be healed. Their sins shall be removed and forgiven. So the names have been uh, brought to the altar. They have been prayed the prayer of faith with the elder. So we're standing on your word now, God, that whatever has happened, you're going to make it better in the name of Jesus. Whatever the situation is, you're going to heal right now. And so, God, the ones that's on that list, help them to make their way to this house so that they will begin to see that God is moving in this atmosphere in the mighty name of Jesus. Well, we thank you for what you've done. We thank you for who you are, and we thank you for how you're going to continue to bless us. Now, as we leave here, buy an all mechanical failure, and let no hurt or danger come to us, but keep us covered under your blood. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And go in peace. And thank you to each and every one of you again.